So in this segment we're going to be talking about unions on the brink of synchronised strikes, says Mick Lynch. And this will be um, an absolute disaster for the government, you know, the new kind of trust administration as well, because you're going to see, we've already seen kind of a summer of kind of small discontent, you're going to see an autumn of it as well. I mean, if, if there are more and more kind of bin collectors and other kind of key workers on strike here, you're looking at an absolute nightmare, especially with medical staff potentially going on strike, teachers as well. Um, it's just going to look like the government have no control over anything. So the leader of the RMT, uh, Mick Lynch, sa has suggested unions are on the brink of calling for synchronised strikes over widespread anger at how much soaring inflation is outpacing wages. So he's saying if, um, I think I saw one of his more recent interviews where he spoke about how if two different kind of groups were planning on going on strike, they'll go on strike simultaneously, not as a sympathetic strike, because I think those are illegal, but just say we're going on strike on this week and another kind of say the train workers are saying we're going to strike on this week. The bus workers might say we'll go on strike this week and kind of plan it out a bit like that. Asked by Sky News how close the UK was to a general strike, Lynch said only the TUC can call a general strike, and I'm amazed that people haven't put more pressure on the TUC. The TUC's General Secretary, Francis O'Grady, was on the picket line behind the RMT boss as he spoke. So you can tell there's some solidarity there, but the TUC will be the key players in this. Lynch added there's a wave of reaction amongst working people to the way we're being treated. People are getting poorer every day of the week, and you know there are some people who are jealous that aren't unionised, um, some people may be temporary staff, or they just they just haven't joined a union for whatever reason. But um, and they're jealous of these striking workers that are fighting for a pay rise. Like, don't be jealous. You know, it's join a union time if you can. People can't pay their bills, which is true, and it's only going to get worse this year. They're getting treated despicably at the workplace, which is also true. Is that I think there will be generalized and, and synchronized action. It may not be in a traditional form, and I don't know what he means by that. Not in a traditional form says, but we've seen the post office workers and BT on strike. We've seen the bus workers in London out on strike tomorrow and over the weekend. I think there's a massive response coming from working people because they're fed up with the way they've been treated. And I think he's absolutely right there. You know, this week, official figures showed pay had fallen behind inflation at a record rate. And the inflation rate of, you know, hit 10.1% and that will go even higher towards the end of this year. Lynch repeated that RMT workers did not want to be on strike because workers generally don't want to be on strike because you won't get paid for it. He said, he, will, he said, we will keep going until we get a negotiated settlement and our members decide whether it's acceptable or not. And, you know, the government strategy of kind of waiting out these striking workers isn't working. Um, Grant Shapps, who's in charge of transport, he might get moved on. They might bring someone else in, uh, depending on what Liz Truss wants to actually do if she actually wins it. He confirmed the RMT had rejected an 8% pay increase offer from Network Rail be, because it would be over three years. And obviously that's not the right pay increase. Inflation now is at around the 10% mark. Getting, an inf getting a pay rise of 8% over three years is not a great deal. Now, what the government will say is we've offered an 8% pay, pay rise, but they won't mention the three-year thing because the government, all they know is spin and lies. He pointed out that other transport workers had been offered better deals. Lynch said, we've had a, a deal done in the aviation industry of 12 and 13% this week. It's interesting why they would kind of bow to the aviation industry is it that because the the aviation industries are more private are privately run you know the government ultimately has a say over network rail and i think how much these workers will get paid maybe the government don't have that same sway over aviation workers if we were to accept four percent for this year four percent for next year members would be poorer as a result of that deal and which is true and let's not forget here that these train companies do can increase prices by the retail price index why don't workers get that same pay increase he said the obstacle here at the moment is the stance of the minister, Grant Shapps, backed up by the Treasury. And I think that's got um, a bit wound up with the Conservative Party's leadership process. That maybe that, you know, Boris Johnson doesn't want to give it up kind of thing to these trade unionists and wants Liz Truss to have to deal with it. He added, if we can get companies to negotiating fr uh, freely without being shackled by the government, we can negotiate a settlement in this dispute and get the railways back up to running fully. The problem is that's not going to happen for a while, um, especially as, you know, we don't know if Grant Shapps is going to be replaced, but, you know, people in the Treasury will be replaced ultimately. We don't know if Zahawi will keep his job as Chancellor and we don't know who's going to be um, in different ministerial positions. Lynch said um, he fears that because of the political interference that's happening with the public transport and the Treasury, they're not going to be able to do that effectively. They're not going to be able to kind of get the negotiated pay all they're looking for. And I, I don't know exactly what the figure Lynch is looking for is. I think it's around the 8% mark, which is still below inflation, but I think that might be the best they can get. Um, 
the problem is as inflation kind of rises through the year, maybe Lynch has looked at that and says, actually, well, no, it's not just Lynch, is it, though? It's the trade union's members. They're the ones who, who vote on this stuff, ultimately. Maybe they've been advised on the fact that inflation is going to go well above 10% into the 15% mark, potentially 17% mark. So even agreeing a 10% pay rise now would not be a smart idea. If I was the government, I would look at giving them an 8% pay rise. I know it's going to cause shockwaves in the other industries, but you do that, you sign them up to you know a longer-term deal, for example, and then it's going to be hard for them to strike in future when you know inflation hits a much higher percentage point. But that's if I'm a cynical Tory, I would do that. And unfortunately, I'm not a cynical Tory because those guys make bank. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.